You're watching ESPN's Tip-Off Marathon, presented by Disney Parks. It may be the wee morning hours across most of the United States, but here in Honolulu, Hawaii, the clock has yet to strike midnight as the Rainbow Warrior basketball team gets set to open up the 2011-2012 season against the Matadors of Cal State Northridge. Year number four of the college basketball tip-off marathon continues from the 50th state. It's time for hoops. Let the marathon begin, huh? Clark, tough three. Oh. Got it. It's over. The streak extends to 80 for UConn. Siva. Wow. I can't get enough of what you got. You guys, you hit the spot. Try to let go, but I just cannot. So don't you stop. I need that. Stay up. Stay strong. Because this day is long. Too much is not enough. The College Hoops Tip-Off Marathon. Welcome to the tip-off marathon presented by Disney Parks tonight from the Stan Sheriff Center on the campus of the University of Hawaii. The Cal State Northridge Matadors take on the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. How you doing everybody? Kanoa Leahy working the graveyard shift with former college basketball coach Mark Adams. Mark, fourth straight year that UH has been a participant in the tip-off marathon. You've been out here all four years, so what are we in store for? One thing I've learned, Kanoa, is that Hawaiians understand how to party with their late night basketball. It's gonna be a very competitive game against two very interesting teams, one from the Big West, one from the WAC, ready to get after it. Yeah, one experienced, one inexperienced. The experienced team is UH, returning three starters, including leading scorer from a year ago, Zane Johnson. Gib Arnold calls Zane Johnson one of the best two guards in the Western United States. Quick draw shot ability, can score from downtown, really loads it up well. Great shot fundamentals from Zane Johnson. On the other side, the Matadors trying to deal with the losses from last year, including big time performers, Lenny Daniel and Rashawn McLemore. Two of the best in the Big West are gone. So what has Bobby Braswell done? He's brought in 13 newcomers that have all been freshmen to enter the program over the last two seasons. One of the youngest teams in the country will try to make up for that loss of production. So as we take a look now at the one-on-one, -on -one, what we've already mentioned, the experience versus the inexperienced. Northridge simply one of the youngest teams in all of college basketball. And the challenge for Bobby Braswell is to get his team to execute on the road in a hostile environment. Typically, young teams go on their own on offense and they get brain cramps on defense as well. We'll see if that discipline carries over. And for Hawaii to expose that with the three starters as Gib Arnold, I believe that Hawaii is a team that can win the WAC this year. Matadors will start two freshmen and two sophomores in the first five, including at the point guard position, Alan Gway, who will start in place of the expected point guard to get things going, Akil Quinn, who is out with an injury. On the other side for the Rainbow Warriors, one of the keys will be the newcomer, another freshman at the guard position, Shaquille Stokes, who comes in with a big time reputation. The player of the year in New York City, Shaquille Stokes has come a long way to play on national television tonight. Head coaches Gib Arnold in his second year atop this program led them to a nine win turnaround a year ago. And on the other side, Bobby Braswell entering his 16th year and what he preaches is defense, defense, defense. His teams have ranked in the top 25 in steals 12 of his previous 15 seasons on the job. Well, and expect that to be the staple tonight defensively for Northridge. Attack, attack, attack defensively. And can Shaquille Stokes handle the pressure as a freshman point guard for Hawaii tonight? This is the official season opener for Hawaii. On the other side, Northridge, they lost their opener on the road to USC 66-59. That was last Friday at the Galen Center. Kind of an ugly game. Northridge missing 19 of its first 20 field goal attempts and just eight points coming from their big men, a very guard-oriented squad, offensively speaking. Well, the bad news for Northridge is that they lost and played very, very poorly, but only lost by seven to USC. Vander Joachim, 
one of the co-captains jumping for Hawaii against Thomas Jacobs. And Joaquin wins the battle, so Hawaii will have the rock here to get things started. An 11 p.m. start time here in Honolulu, Hawaii. Zane Johnson reverse layup, and he doesn't waste any time in getting into the scoring column. That's where Zane Johnson, number three and wide, has really improved his game. Not just a stand-up shooter anymore. He can attack off the dribble. Here's Josh Green with it, number zero from Northridge. A couple of defenders up in front of him. Underneath, ball batted around, and it will stay here with the team in black. Three seniors, zero juniors, six sophomores, nine freshmen on the roster for the Matadors. And usually young teams on the road, Kanoa, they'll break down offensively. They'll go one or two passes and then try to do it by themselves. We'll see if this Northridge team has learned from their first outing against USC. They will look to up the tempo when they can. Hawaii in this zone look early. Green hoists up a three. That's no good. And Johnson with the board. Here's Bobby Miles. He is a sophomore, and that one gets knocked away. It'll stay here with Hawaii. And inbounding will be Shaq Stokes, number four for the team in white. Joaquin with it. So much improvement over the course of last year into this season. They really have big ideas for Vander Joachim, showing a little bit of the arsenal there. Vander Joachim has been challenged to be a leader. What does a leader do early? Fundamental post play. Well done. John Hayward Mayhew trying to return the favor. Couldn't find it. And here come the Rainbow Warriors, up 4-0 in the early going. And watch number 15 in white down low, Vander Joaquin, very physical. He wants the ball. Here's Johnson putting it on the floor, rising up. That one glances off no good. And a foul will be called on the rebound against Northridge. Vander Joaquin, a native of Luanda, Angola. Average nine and a half points per game, eight rebounds, and a team high eight double doubles. Here he is flashing the offensive game. Vander Joaquin, one of the most improved big guys in the Western U.S. Good footwork. Miles for three. That one rattles in and out. Now the freshman Gray bringing it back up. It gets poked by Stokes. Gray on the floor for it, and he passes it into the backcourt. But they'll say it was deflected. So. No turnover there for Northridge, under 20 on the shot clock. Now, Canola, remember how inexperienced teams often rush through their offense, which turns to turnovers. We're seeing that nervousness right now from Northridge. Missed by Hicks straight on. Now Hawaii will get into its half-court offense. Bobby Miles, a Los Angeles native. Find Stokes, fellow Californian, strong drive, can't finish. Wiseman, the offensive board, and he draws a whistle. Trevor Wiseman proclaimed to be the blue collar worker of this Hawaii club. Well, right now, Hawaii between Trevor Wiseman and Vander Joaquin, they are dominating the offensive glass. First one is good from Wiseman. Started eight of 30 games last year. Was a 69% free throw shooter. And he goes one of two on that trip. Northridge trying to force the issue. They go cross court. Here is Stephen Hicks working against Johnson. And Johnson will get caught reaching in. Northridge going 14 and 18 overall a year ago, 9 and 7, finishing third in the Big West Conference. Preseason picked by the media to finish eighth this year because of all that youth. Well, number one, Long Beach State. Well, Stan Monson, what a job he's done there. Casper Ware, one of the truly elite guards in the Big West. And Santa Barbara would also be in that mix. I think a surprise team might be Cal State Fullerton. Hmm. Bob Burton has a way of melding together transfers, and I think it's going to be a very competitive race. Maybe a little bit more competitive than some others think with Long Beach State. A lot of folks think Long Beach State's going to run away with it. Hayward Mayhew from three. That falls well short. 
Some of the crowd chanting air ball. I think they may have gotten a piece of the iron, though. And here's a steal by Jacobs. Gway trying to force it the other way. One on three takes it all the way to the rim. And Gway just explodes to the basket. That's a freshman, really has some great ability. Look at this. Hard pressure from Northridge. This is how they play. This is Bobby Braswell basketball. Stokes, he likes it in the open floor. Couldn't find it on that attempt. And it'll stay here with Hawaii. Well, this is what the Matadors do. They forced 20 turnovers against USC last week. They like to pick it off and get off and running. And Alan Gray. He's got that low center of gravity, very, very strong. I like his explosiveness. Interesting matchup there, Gway versus Stokes, and now a foul called on the pick set by Bobby Miles. This is the seventh time that these two teams have met Hawaii leading the all-time series 5-1. An interesting note, they will be conference foes next season. Hawaii in its 33rd and final year in the Western Athletic Conference, moving to the Big West next year. And then football to the Mountain West. That's right. Johnson thought about it, takes one dribble left, and misses on that. Wiseman, the steal from Gway. Forces the shot and is called for the offensive foul. And we will have an example of the usage of the new rule here, that three-foot arc that is located underneath the basket. Well, Thomas Jacobs stepped in and took the charge from the backside, and there's the arc right there. And you physically have to be outside of that arc as a secondary defender in order to draw contact and take the charge. No part of your body can touch the line, and even if you're airborne, you can't be inside of that arc in any way. It was an experimental rule a year ago was put in officially for this season. Three points deficit here for Northridge. Good ball movement. Vinny McGee, number 11 in there. Lone returning starter, but comes off the bench here in the early goings of this season. And Stephen Hicks drawing the foul. Looks like they'll catch Joaquim with that one. Just over four minutes in. We'll be back from Honolulu, Hawaii. Okay. Yeah, all good. Yeah. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Disney Parks. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by Disney Parks. Don't wait, let the memories begin. And in part by Toyota. That's a view of the active volcano, Kilauea, located on the Big Island here in the state of Hawaii. One of only a few active volcanoes remaining on the planet. And is one of the most active volcanoes, in fact and is home to the Hawaiian volcano goddess, Pele. Well, how about this, Mark? Biggest win improvement. We talked about Hawaii turning things around, plus nine last season, but at the very top of that list, a team that uh, took that improvement and ran. Yeah, Connecticut exploded into the national championship last year, and of course, Hawaii, one of the top 20 improved programs in the country because of that man, Gib Arnold, an interesting motivation technique 
before games, he writes a personal note to every player as a reminder of what their job is on that evening, that they've done a good job in practice. He tries to mix some positive with some teaching with a personal note before every game to every player. Interesting concept, different concept. Gib Arnold receiving a new contract just last week. Here's Miles off the kick from Stokes. Doesn't find the range on that attempt. McGee with the board, and he comes the other way. He will not be shy to unleash a shot. Nice pass underneath the reverse, though no good from Hicks. And now Hawaii will look to run. Good job by the Matadors to get back. Well, that's good defensive transition right there. When you talk Northridge basketball, it's transition on both ends. This team reacts from offense to defense and likewise opposite extremely well. They may be the Matadors. They do not play your quintessential Matador defense, though, if you know what I mean. There is a foul called there defensively against Northridge. Well, tonight, or tomorrow night, if you're here in Hawaii, the tip-off marathon ends with the inaugural State Farm Champions Classic doubleheader first at 7 Eastern. Duke's Mike Krzyzewski continues his quest to surpass his mentor, Bob Knight, atop the men's all-time Division I wins list as the sixth-ranked Blue Devils take on Michigan State. Then at 9 Eastern, Terrence Jones leads the number two Kentucky Wildcats against Thomas Robinson and the 11th-ranked Kansas Jayhawks. The State Farm Champions Classic on ESPN tonight. Coverage begins with the college game day driven by State Farm at 6 Eastern. What a difference Mike Krzyzewski has made at Duke. In the previous 75 years, Duke went to four Final Fours. In the last 25 seasons under Mike Krzyzewski, 11 Final Fours, four national titles, and 789 wins in the last 25 years under Mike Krzyzewski. Good looking shot there by Josh Green, and that's a triple, and we're knotted up at seven. That's good news for Bobby Braswell. Josh Green is a microwave guy. When he gets it going early, it goes down often. Johnson trying to answer, and he does. I love his feet. I love his balance. I love his shot preparation. Zane Johnson, number three in white, watch him all night. Hit a school record. 98 three-pointers last year. And a illegal dribble, a carry, called against Northridge there. That was Josh Green. And so Hawaii will take over on the turnover. Watch Zane Johnson. Watch his feet. Boom. He just pogos right into the jump shot. Look at the extension. And he goes straight up into the jump shot. That's called balance and shot preparation. Attempted 241 three-pointers last year at a 40% clip. And a foul away from the ball. And that's going to be against the Matadors. Frankie Etewati, who just checked in. A 6'10", 190-pound sophomore. Zane Johnson takes over 500 shots per day. It's the repetition, the preparation. He learned how to shoot from his grandfather, who played high school basketball with a guy by the name of Steve Fisher, the head basketball coach at San Diego State. Etewate, though, takes a seat, gets replaced by Ari Feldman, number 32. Also in the game, Jordan Mitchell, number 33 in black. Shaq Stokes controlling, working against McGee. And he gets swiped away by Mitchell. Feldman saves it, and now Northridge on the run. The pull-up three by Green. That one misses badly. But right there to clean up the mess is Stephen Hicks. Well, they may be young, but the Matadors flashing their athleticism here in the first half. Well, they just they just thrive on up-tempo basketball. They're fun to watch. Another press breaker demonstrated by Hawaii. 22 seconds on the shot clock. Trevor Wiseman missed dribbles it there. Another turnover. Green kicks back to Feldman. Squaring up from the free throw line. Gets the friendly bounce. Ari Feldman, a volleyball player. Originally went to Northridge to play volleyball. Pretty good hitter. Now all of a sudden, he's on the basketball court. Hans Brereton, who checked in just moments ago for Hawaii, number 21. One of the newcomers for this Rainbow Warrior team. Couldn't find it on that last three-point attempt. So now Northridge on the attack, and they're going to get Hicks for steps. Lost his balance there. 13.07 left to play in the first half. Into the game for Hawaii, Justin Thomas, a junior, along with Davis Rositis, 
who is a sophomore coming off of a redshirt year, a transfer from USC, who stands at seven feet, tallest player on the Hawaii roster. It's a violation. You can't move along the baseline. That was a dead ball situation. So the out-of-bounds passer cannot move on the baseline. Fisher called it. Turnover, Hawaii. Fourth turnover for the Rainbow Warriors. And Northridge now protecting a one-point advantage. This is Devon Potts, number 22. Hawaii showing some zone out of the out-of-bounds play on the baseline. McGee, that's a hefty three. Rebound, Rosidis. Johnson, nobody came up to cover him. And he makes him pay. A lot of iron in his diet. Soft. Soft extension. Johnson now two of three from outside the property line. And a two-point advantage for Hawaii. McGee with it against Stokes. Again, not shy, had 14 points versus USC, but they work it to Hicks. With four on the shot clock, knocks it down. Boy, it worked out, but Northridge just took 25 seconds to even get into their offense. Sometimes it just comes down to talent, and Stephen Hicks knocks it down. Stephen Hicks. Johnson coming off the curl. He likes this. Can't hit it there, though. And Hicks with the board. Hawaii started off this game getting the ball inside, settling for a lot of jump shots right now. Thomas getting caught there, trying to go after the loose ball. We'll take a break. Coming up, we will take a look at some of the best under-the-radar mid-major players this season. Is there another mid-major school like VCU or Butler who can make a run to the Final Four? All that and more when we come back. Back here in beautiful Honolulu, Hawaii, as the Rainbow Warrior basketball team taking on the Matadors of Cal State Northridge. They've played to a stalemate thus far. This is game three in the tip-off marathon. Things started off with Gonzaga, number 23, taking on Washington State and winning 89-81. On Gonzaga, of course, knocking off Washington State, one of the teams that, that I believe can make that final four run along with Memphis, Xavier, Creighton, Drexel, Kent State, you know, Butler and Virginia Commonwealth, VCU. Made it pretty vogue this year for mid-majors to go to the Final Four, and those, those programs are definitely on the verge. You mentioned Drexel. Drexel at Ryder coming up at the conclusion of this one as the marathon rolls on for the fourth year. Drexel, one of my picks to win the Colonial Athletic Association this year. Bruiser Flint with Chris Fouch, one of the long-range bombers, a guard that can score the ball. Sammy Gibbons inside, strong rebounder. We are 
in the fifth hour of the marathon. At least 25 hours, 21 games on all the ESPN networks. A foul away from the ball, by the way, called against the Rainbows. They now have a total of 16 fouls. When they hit seven, you will be notified at the bottom of your screen as our lower score graphic will flash bonus for the team that has granted the one and one. And at 10 team fouls, the opposing team, you'll see a bonus plus because they'll get two shots per foul. A little over exuberance in the backcourt defensively there for Northridge. Some of my under-the-radar mid-major players, Doug McDermott, one of the truly great players. I think he has All-American ability playing for his father, Greg McDermott at Creighton. Damian Lillard, one of the best combo guards in the country at Reber State. Will Barton at Memphis. Keith Wright, a big guy. You don't hear a lot about Harvard and Tommy Amaker, but Keith Wright inside can really wheel and deal. And Harvard is a basketball team you've got to watch. Rainbow Warriors down three. Here's Thomas at the elbow. He's going to rise up for a jumper. That one misses. And the rebound, Josh Green. I really think Hawaii needs to reestablish the low post game with Vander Joachim on the next possession. Hawaii's been settling for jump shot, jump shot. Joachim is a big target down low. Hayward Mayhew. Joachim dared him, and he made him pay. It's now a five-point advantage for Northridge. Biggest lead of the game. Here's Garrett Jefferson, one of the late recruits in the offseason for Hawaii, and he draws the foul on the drive. They'll get Lonnie Watson, number 14, for Northridge with the whistle. As for Garrett Jefferson, again, he was recruited late this summer. Only two of Gib Arnold's six recruits for this year's class qualified academically. That's Hans Brereton and Shaq Stokes. And so Arnold had to scramble to bring in a few more guys. Jefferson was one of them and a pretty good find. They love his defensive abilities and the guy can rise up off the hardwood. Here's Stokes left corner. Settling for jump shot again. That's a freshman, Shaquille Stokes, a lot of talent. Green can't hit, the follow no. Mitchell couldn't find it up close, and so the scramble into the corner, and Hicks will retrieve it for Northridge. Boom. Three by McGee off the mark. And a whistle will be called against Vander Joachim. It'll be a double foul between Joaquim and number 33, Jordan Mitchell. And for Joaquim, that is personal foul number two, first for Mitchell. Well, that is a big foul right there for Hawaii. That's a big target down low as Vander Joaquim now will sit probably for the remainder of the half with 9.46 to go in the first half. Davisa Rositis comes in in his place. Now a discussion. As Bobby Braswell trying to get an explanation from the officiating crew. And both teams now in the bonus. As you see down along our line there. Nice little value-added graphic for our fans that can follow along when teams are in the bonus and in the bonus plus up to 10 fouls. A little addition, make things a little easier to understand. And a call against Hawaii. It will belong to Northridge. They're going to say that Stokes dribbled that one out of bounds. And so the Matadors will take over. So things getting a little sloppy here, particularly for Hawaii now with six turnovers, shooting just 26% from the floor. Northridge can draw you into this type of a game. It may not be always pretty, but this is a team that just finds ways to score just like that. Yeah, somehow finding a way was Stefan Hicks. And Johnson somehow saves it. Rosinus easy too. Another near turnover. Johnson made it work. Hicks for three. The rebound, Thomas. And Hawaii will bring it up in a more slow type fashion. As I say that, Stokes turns on the boosters and is fouled on the path of travel. I'd like to see Shaquille Stokes do more of that. 
where he penetrates with the basketball, finds the open man. Oftentimes, the New York City Player of the Year looks for his shot first. For him to make the transition as a collegiate point guard, I think he needs to be a more of a pass-first point guard. Well, he will shoot the one-and-one. One. Stokes, a three-year starter at Lincoln High School, the same program that spawned the careers of Stephon Marbury, Sebastian Telfair, Lance Stevenson. Way gets it blocked by Stokes. That was 5-10 blocking 5-10. Johnson the other way, up, in, and one. The New York City Player of the Year, Shaquille Stokes, can defend right there with the rejection. He's got good instincts, got good athleticism, good strength for a freshman point guard. We talked about some of the history past New York City Players of the Year, all from Lincoln High School. And that is a lineup of stars. Shaquille Stokes, who decided to come out to Hawaii, and I mean, that is a leap of faith when you're talking about going as far across the United States as you possibly can imagine to play your college hoops career. He came here because of the Ohana of this program. And you know what Ohana means now, right? It's all about family. There it's about the Hawaiian family. You know, it was interesting talking to Gib Arnold about the recruitment of Shaquille Stokes, and he mentioned that it only took three weeks in order to sign the New York City Player of the Year was because his relationship with Tiny Morton, the coach there in New York, and also the feeling of Ohana that Shaquille Stokes felt when he came here to Hawaii. Miles dribbles it off the foot of Gwe, and so with 21 seconds left on the shot clock, the Rainbow Warriors will retain possession. Look for number three in white, Zane Johnson, to really take control of this offense. Here he comes for the ball. There's your matchup, three versus three. Adis Rosidis trying to back down against Hayward Mayhew, and he'll be called for the traveling violation. Much to his chagrin. And that's going to be turnover number seven for Hawaii. Again, Northridge having a difficult time getting to an offensive flow. Ten on the shot clock. Bounce pass down low. Feldman, point blank range. After all of that dribbling by Gway, somehow Feldman found the seam. And Gway found him. And the lead is back to five for the Matadors. Here's Brereton. Picked up the dribble, almost walked with it. Under 15 on the shot clock. Johnson fakes right, goes left, hits the three. Once upon a time, Zane Johnson was a stand-up shooter. Not anymore. Jab step, quick drop from number three, Zane Johnson. Now three for five from beyond the arc. Five for eight from the floor overall. 13 points to lead all scorers for Johnson. And Stephen Hicks. Gets it back into the hands of Josh Green. Under seven minutes left here in the first half, and six seconds left on the shot clock. Gway, the scoop, doesn't go. Rebound batted around, Miles comes out with it. Ahead to Johnson. And we're tied at 22. Northridge breaking down offensively. Shot clock continues to run down in the 15 to 10 second mark, and then it's all dribble penetration. Bad shot. Bad shot there by Hicks. Bowes off and running again. Wiseman to Brereton. And a foul will be called underneath. It'll be a blocking foul called against Quay. Well, Zane Johnson, when he's hot, the Rainbow Warriors start to flow, shooting now 42% from the floor.
Zane Johnson starting to heat up. It's now tied at 22 between Hawaii and Cal State Northridge. Mark, take us inside the play. How do you create offense as a shooter? It starts with a quality jab step. Watch the right foot of number three, Zane Johnson, right there. Watch the defender react. Let's run it. Defender gets off balance. Zane Johnson with a hard step to the left and perfectly vertical going into the jump shot. That is perfectly executed jab step by one of the great shooters in the country, Zane Johnson. Hawaii on a 9-2 run the last three minutes and 11 seconds to respond to a 9-0 run by Northridge. Now make it a 10-2 run with that Wiseman free throw. It was fascinating to talk to Zane Johnson today about his relationship with his grandfather when he would come home from school. His grandfather would school him on proper fundamentals of the jump shot. Grandpa, you did a heck of a job. 500 jump shots per day in the offseason for Zane Johnson. That's what it takes to be a great shooter. And a two-point advantage now for Hawaii. A pretty good game here going in the first half. Game three of the tip-off marathon. In Honolulu, Hawaii. Power move by Hayward Mayhew, and he's going to draw the foul. Wiseman pleading the law of verticality to no avail. His second. Tonight, college basketball continues with two more games on ESPN2. First at 6 Eastern, Pat Summit and the number three Lady Vols open their season by hosting seventh-ranked Miami in the State Farm Tip-Off Classic. Then at 8 Eastern, two top 10 ranked teams meet as the number eight Florida Gators take on Jared Sullinger and the third-ranked Ohio State Buckeyes. Tip-Off Marathon presented by Disney Parks tonight on ESPN2. With Thad Mata, not only has Jared Sullinger, but it's pretty nice when you got a shooter with size like William Buford, a decision maker like Aaron Kraft, Deshaun Thomas, an athletic scorer. The Ohio State Buckeyes, definitely a team that could win it all this year. One of two from the line there for John Hayward Mayhew. So Hawaii hangs on to the slim lead. Wiseman. Doing his Zane Johnson impression with the jab step and riser. That one from inside the yard. Totally off balance, but it goes in. That's just a, a good shot as far as Gib Arnold's concerned. Hayward Mayhew trying to go to work on Wiseman. They like the matchup there. 6'9 Hayward Mayhew versus the 6'7 Wiseman. Couldn't find it, though, on that trip. And the dump pass from Stokes to Wiseman, and back at the other end, Hayward Mayhew is still down after that move he tried to put on Wiseman. Looked like he came down awkwardly on that left knee, and he's grabbing it, thriving in pain. John, breathe it out, breathe it out, John. Let get the rest, let me get the rest. Oh, fuck. John Hayward Mayhew, 6'9", 225 pounds senior from Eugene, Oregon. Started five of 30 games last season. Put in 14 minutes in the loss against USC last week. Now being tended to. One of only three seniors on this roster. Looks like they're testing out that left knee. Take another look at the play that Hayward Mayhew appeared to get hurt on. Oh, there it is right there, the left knee. Hyperextended balance. The classic hyperextension. Hayward Mayhew putting in some work tonight, five points, two for four from the floor and getting an applause from the fans here at the Stam Sheriff Center as he gingerly makes his way back to the Northridge bench. Well, if he's putting weight on it and walking off the floor under his own power, that's great news for Northridge. Now, we focused in on the injury there, but it's what happened at the other end of the floor that has Hawaii celebrating up five now, the feed from Shaq Stokes. That's where Shaquille Stokes can make a big difference for this offense, being a pass-first point guard, drawn defenders off the dribble penetration, the no-look pass inside. That's where this young man can turn this into a championship program 
by being a pass-first point guard for Gib Arnold. Hawaii played an exhibition game against D2 school, Hawaii Pacific University, on Friday, winning 62-56. Too close for comfort from the standpoint of Gib Arnold. Stokes had 11 points in that debut, didn't shoot that well from the field. But perhaps this tempo works more in favor of the kind of player that Shaq Stokes is at this juncture in his career. Shot in traffic by Green. Didn't go, but Feldman the offensive board, and they're going to reset it to Potts. His triple bangs off the heel. Miles collects it. Hawaii with the numbers. Wiseman! A 13-1 run for UH. And the lead is seven. Well, Hawaii doing a great job of getting out, denying entry passes into the offense. Interior pass there for Northridge. Feldman couldn't hit from about five feet. Miles, he's going to initiate the action and win the battle. The lead is nine, and a timeout called by Bobby Braswell. 3.52 left. Nine point advantage, Hawaii. Point advantage for Hawaii. They are now shooting 52% from the field. And how about the sophomore in transition? Look at Bobby Miles as he surveys the defense. When you've got Shaquille Stokes and Bobby Miles together, theoretically two point guards on the floor at the same time. And Bobby Miles gives this basketball team what Hiram Thompson did for Hawaii, stability at the other guard position for Hawaii. Hiram Thompson along with Bill Amos. Captains from last season lost as they wrapped up their eligibility. Bill Amos, a big fella, led the team in scoring and rebounding through an injury-plagued senior year. And what a job they did. Plus nine in the win total, one of the top 20 turnarounds in the country here in Hawaii. Green is fouled well behind the arc. 3.26 left to play in the first half from the land of the surfers. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball.
ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by PlayStation 3. Now only $249. Long live play. And Enterprise Rent-A-Car will pick you up. Well, things started off pretty well for Cal State and Northridge, but they've turned around thanks to a 15-1 run by Hawaii over the last four minutes and 16 seconds. Well, certainly let's credit Hawaii's defense as we look at our one-on-one, -on -one, the youth versus experience. And remember that youth, 13 new players over the last two seasons, all freshmen coming in and the experience of Hawaii. And Kanoa, we talk about what does an experience, how does it show itself in a pressure pack situation? You give up on your offense, you start forcing shots, and Northridge nine for 31 in the first half. Green at the free throw line for Northridge, a must needed tourniquet to this Hawaii run. Fouled on a three point attempt by Shaq Stokes. And so he's able to hit the first two, trying to tack on another. Watch for the trapping defense out of the make. Well, Northridge actually backing up to the half court. They're going to look for the half court trap area. There it is. Johnson in the deep corner. Miles, and yeah, that trap is coming. Fast and furious. If you hold the ball, you will be trapped. You've got to get rid of it. Here's a steal by Green. Ahead it goes to Hicks. Lost it out of bounds. It will stay in the direction of Northridge. Coming up on the UPS Halftime Report, defending champs in action. Coach K's record climb and Kansas-Kentucky, a preview on that matchup, which will close out the tip-off marathon. I can't wait to see Kentucky. John Calipari with another top recruiting class. Last three seasons of recruiting, John Calipari and Kentucky have had the number one recruiting class according to ESPNU.com, which is your home for everything recruiting. That was a deep try by Johnson. Rebound corralled by Jacobs. Hawaii now shooting 50% from the field. Now, let's watch Northridge and watch how the ball stalls. 15 seconds off the shot clock's gone to one area for a clear out right there. Tough attempt by Hicks, but he draws the foul. Was going to say Northridge now shooting 28% from the field. So the percentages have seesawed in favor of Hawaii, and this is a Hawaii team mark that last year set a school record ranked eighth in the country in defensive field goal percentage at 389. Well, that's why they were plus nine in the win column from 10 victories the previous season to 19 last year. Gear Barnum's done an amazing job. And with that trajectory of Hawaii victories, I believe this team is good enough and talented enough to win at home in the back. And if you can go on the road and pluck a few, Maybe Utah State won't be the champion of the WAC. Seems like perennially that's what happens. Utah State and Nevada picked as the favorites in the media and coaches polls. Hawaii picked fourth in both, but you like Hawaii's chances in this conference. I picked Hawaii to win the WAC. I love Brock Keith Payne, Brady Jardine at Utah State. I think that Nevada has obviously five starters returning, but I believe this basketball team has enough talent to make a serious run and even win the WAC championship. We'll get into more of Mark's predictions later. We'll put on the Nostradamus cap. But a whistle against Northridge going against Vinnie McGee. Both teams now over the 10 foul limit, and so you'll see in that lower score graphic, bonus plus under each side meaning that both teams on every foul will be shooting two. Trevor Wiseman, the beneficiary on this trip, misses his first try. He has nine points on the night. Now three for five from the free throw line. You know, Kano, in the three years that this game has been shown locally at 11 p.m. Hawaiian Aleutian Island time and 4 a.m. on the East Coast, the margin of victory the most has been six points. It's always been a close, close ball game. Hawaii two and one in tip-off marathon games. Northridge playing in the tip-off marathon for the first time. Hawaii knocked off Central Michigan by three last year. In 2009, Hawaii lost to Northern Colorado in 08, an overtime game. Hawaii lost to Idaho State, so all very competitive games. This late night basketball's pretty good stuff. One-three-one zone out of Northridge. 
Stokes trying to find the lane. Here's Brereton. Back to Stokes. Long three. Rimmed out. Good looking rebound by Allen Giles, the fourth, number 24 for Northridge. Under two minutes to go here in half number one. And again, that half court offense for the Matadors. Good drive by Giles. Came up empty though. Wiseman, he's been leading the break a few times here for the Rainbow Warriors. Stokes draws the contact. And it'll be a blocking foul called against Vinny McGee. Tonight, the tip-off marathon ends with the inaugural State Farm Champions Classic doubleheader. First at 7 Eastern, Duke's Mike Krzyzewski continues his quest to surpass his mentor, Bob Knight, atop the men's all-time Division I wins list as the sixth-ranked Blue Devils take on Michigan State. Then at 9 Eastern, Terrence Jones leads the number two Kentucky Wildcats against Thomas Robinson and the 11th-ranked Kansas Jayhawks. The State Farm Champions Classic on ESPN tonight. Coverage begins with college game day driven by State Farm at 6 Eastern. Kansas with seven straight Big 12 championship trophies. Going be challenged this year. I think Baylor's a ball club that can certainly rise up. Perry Jones, Scott Drew, the head coach there, got a great job at Baylor. A foul on Stokes. And that is his second. So now the personal foul starting to stack up. That's the 11th team foul for Hawaii. Northridge has 13. Vander Joachim and Stokes now with two fouls apiece for Hawaii. For Northridge, Etewati, McGee with two fouls along with Gue. Two fouls as well for Mitchell. Three fouls for Thomas Jacobs. And on the graphics line, you see the bonus plus, meaning that both teams now will shoot the double bonus. Two free throws on every foul. And Vinny McGee able to hit the free throw. McGee, a transfer from Sac State couple years back. Transferred prior to his sophomore season, now a senior from Northridge, was the Big Sky Freshman of the Year at Sac State. And he's able to trim the deficit down to four. Much looser zone here exhibited by Northridge. But it's able to result in another Hawaii turnover. Bobby Braswell showed the 1-3-1 one, one with a little trapping action, then backs off, goes straight 1-3-1. One, one. It threw Hawaii a little bit off their game offensively. Garrett Jefferson comes in replacing Stokes for Hawaii. Rainbow Warriors now with nine turnovers compared to five for the Matadors. Jefferson, he gets after it on D. Great on-ball defender. around Vinny McGee. 13 on the shot clock. Hicks, strong take. A lot of contact, no whistle. And it's back to a two-point game. Look for Zane Johnson to get more involved. Number three in white against this zone. He's open, too. Brereton for three, yes! And now Northridge will have a chance at the final shot. First points of the game for Hans Brereton. Watch at the end of the possession, number 11, Vinnie McGee will make the decision. You're gonna have to go get the basketball as Hicks picked up his dribble. Seven seconds on the clock. Here's Feldman in the lane, it dances in. And Gib Arnold will call the timeout with 2.5 remaining on the game clock. Well, it was kind of a seesaw effort, really, in this first half. Northridge came out hot. Northridge forcing a lot of turnovers. But Hawaii able to find the range in that middle portion of the first half, and they've been able to build the lead. I like the energy of Northridge. This team has played very, very hard in the full court defense, been able to cause some turnovers and create offense through their defense. But they balked down in the half court sets. For Hawaii, Zane Johnson been a big key. The more that he can get open, knock down shots, the more it extends the defense, allows inside offense to take place for Hawaii. You see Johnson leading everybody with 15 points. Hicks is the leader on the other side for Northridge with 12. Now, the time of this game, 
We are approaching the midnight hour here in Hawaii. We are approaching the 2 a.m. hour where Northridge is coming from. Does fatigue start to kick in here? Two and a half seconds left. Johnson, great feed, can't hit the three. And that is your halftime score. So that'll be the question as we head into the second half of play. At the end of the first half, the Rainbow Warriors of Hawaii lead 37-34. After these messages, we'll send you to Reese Davis in the studio for the UPS Halftime Report. See you in a bit from Honolulu, Hawaii.